Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Donna Miller, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Purse Power. Purse Power is working to help women use their massive purchasing power to drive positive change. We believe that if women who make 80% of all purchasing decisions would choose to buy from the companies that actively promote women, and we would do that in mass, and we could create a funding stream for battered women's shelters in the process, that we could shatter glass ceilings and change lives. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. I'm so excited to have Athena Captain here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be great. I, I really am anxious to learn from you. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and give your bio and then we'll get into the questions, yeah. okay? All right, so Athena, apparently in 2012, Tim Turner decided to transform Turner and Sons business design from a production builder to a custom home builder. And um, you were asked, as I understand it, as a partner and director of sales to create an entirely new sales and marketing program for the company. Yes, uh, you were highly successful at doing that, and you were, created a multi-million dollar referral-based business within five years. And I know a lot of our audience members are consultants and coaches, and the referral-based business is everything. That's that's key to all of us. Um, Athena's prospecting system has been proven so effective that she launched Athena Captain's Coaching, where she teaches her systems to help others build their own referral-based businesses. Um, and she, she says, this is proof that sometimes our greatest accomplishments are born of our largest challenges. <laughs> yep. The other thing about you is I know that you're the captain and co-founder of, uh, I mean, you're the co-founder of Savannah Station Equine Therapy Program. Um, and that's in honor of your daughter, Savannah, which I love the name Savannah. It's beautiful. Um, and you're a board member of the Oklahoma Family Network. Yes, ma'am. So, Thank you again for being here. All right, so we want to learn, first of all, your backstory. How did you get here in terms of your life and career? Um, I, I'm from the school of hard knocks, so I don't actually have a college education. I came from, for those of you who are listening and maybe have come understand what the A score, adverse childhood experience, um, I come from a very high A score background. And so um, I figured out very early, I had to figure, um, find something that I was good at to support myself. And lo and behold, I went into sales and sales management and uh, created a career. I had the privilege of having a great career and had lots of success, thank goodness, um, and personal development. And I'll, I'll just say uh, also healing, a lot of healing from the trauma. And, but then I found myself, like you just read, as a single mom of a child with, in the disability world, we call it severe profound. And um, those women who are listening to this, you understand this. I couldn't travel all over the world when I could get a phone call that my daughter was on the way to the hospital. So unfortunately, the world had told me, right? Like I had achieved it. I had the corner office. I did all the things that we're told that we we're supposed to do in life. And then I found myself, I, I had to give that up. And so that's where I went to work with Tim um, so that I could do something local and I could be at a moment's notice to go do what I needed to do with my daughter. Took a huge pay cut to do it. Huge, huge, best decision I ever made. And then I embarked on, honestly, the hardest journey I've ever done in my entire life. What I learned is it's easy, easier to go into a corporation that already has a sales and marketing somewhat established, Fortune 500, and then just out excel my peers, right? That's okay. We, uh, I think most of the women that are listening, we know what it's like to just have to show up and, and no, no offense men, but show up even better than you. Right. So we know what that's like. Um, but I had never had to create something from scratch. And so in creating it, um, I, I have to say, I wanted to throw in the towel. I'm very transparent and honest with people. I almost bankrupt my family, myself, <laughs> the company a number of times. That's a true story. It wasn't easy. Um, but I created what I call a 10 step process. And I now teach that 10 step process throughout the United States to all different businesses, uh, because I don't want somebody to have as, as hard a time as I did. You know, I, the honest story is I really did not, um, have a lot of economic challenges. I lost hair. I gained over 150 pounds of stress. Yeah all the things. And I think, unfortunately, I don't think we talk about that. You know, we look at the end result. People only see the, oh, you do this or you fly private or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Well, it, that, it, that took a lot <laughs> and I'm still um, learning obviously. And so now we, in the last three years, we've decided to go national and I'm excited in the next 90 days, my platform will totally change 
because we um, have evolved, right? Right. As you get into it, you evolve and you find new things. So that's where I'm, how I'm here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh gosh, congratulations. Congratulations on all you've overcome. Um, I'm participating in a, a program, it's called Free Ride Program, where they're giving a car to um, some worthy um, high school kids coming out of high school, going into college and reading their life stories. I mean, oh my gosh, the things that people have to overcome. So congratulations, congratulations, it's amazing. All right. Okay, uh, so I know you work with CEOs and sales leaders on a daily basis. This is a weird time in our economy. I mean, what are their biggest concerns right now? Um, one of the biggest things I wanted to say about that, and I have a little pin next to me that says, I heard there's a recession going on. I'm not participating. Uh -huh. um, so the very first thing I'm going to say is um, stop with the mindset. Turn off what I call CNN, which is, you know, constant negative news. Stop. Um, the, the very first thing I, I would say, I didn't get where I'm at today, and I, I'm definitely not a hero, um, because I listened to statistics of what I was going to become or what I was able to achieve. So the first thing I would say is get your mindset right. Um, we There is potential business. There is capability. There is great talent out there. We just have to have the mindset that we can achieve no matter what economy. And actually, if we look at history, most millionaires and corporations that excel, excel during this time of time. We just got to yeah. double down and get into it and believe we can. So that's the very first thing. The second thing is that we have to um, step back for a second and realize in a good economy, we all stopped doing, not all, most, stop doing the fundamentals. Right. When the economy is great, then we go into this creative mode and we're like, well, this is good. So I'm going to go do this and this. And so what I really find is I take people and I say, hey, let's stop. Let's, you got to have some fun for a minute, creative fun. Let's go back and let's reevaluate your fundamentals. And so it, for me, it's it's taking these 10 steps and just coming back and saying, let's get back to the basics. And the basics for me are what are we doing with the relationships that we currently have? What are we doing with our prospecting plans? Do we know our target markets? What are we doing to do the behaviors for consistent cash flow? Because I guarantee you, those things aren't fixed. But instead of evaluating those, we say it's the economy. Usually it's our behaviors and beliefs. Oh boy, is that a good point? That is a really, really good point. Well, and I also believe in the field of positive psychology. It's about thinking about what you want, not barriers, not what's in your way, what's going wrong. You think about what you want and how to get there. Good for you. I'm into that. Okay. All right. So, so you, you kind of did a, a couple of high level, you commented on a couple of pieces of your program. Can you build that out just a little bit more? So I'm, I'm interested in the high level basics, if you can give it to us. Okay. I, I think if I, so if we just Keep it simple. I don't want to go through all the 10 steps. The the ones that if you're listening right now and you're in it, that last, last answer resonated with you. Here's what I would ask you to do. Step back for a second and look at either your behaviors and your team's behaviors of what are you doing? Do you know your target markets? Do you know who they are? Um, one of the things that I want to say to anyone listening, please understand every single person that's on this call, we have some relative similar target markets, and that is your past clients and your referral partners. And, and usually people look at me and like, oh yeah, duh, Athena. However, my question is, do you know them? Do you, can you create an avatar, a picture of them? Do you know their hopes, their fears? Do you know their demographics? Do you know currently right now, their struggles, their dreams? Do you know them? Could you hear them in a crowd? And if you can't, let's step back and create that picture. And then my second question is, what are you doing to really go deep into those relationships? I don't think right now is a wide net approach. I don't think companies need more leads right now. I think we need to step back, understand who we're serving, go deeper into the relationships we have, expand on those relationships. And then frankly, this is gonna sound very boring, but I, it's the truth. What's your follow-up plan look like, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fundamental. But I, I see so many times I meet with CEOs and they're they're struggling. They're like, Athena, you need to create more leads. And Donna, this is what I say to them. I need to see your follow-up plan and if it's really being enacted before I teach you to get more leads. Because mm -hmm. we need to honor what we currently have yeah. before we 
dishonor more. Yeah. So I really want us to think through, if you just step back, what is truly our follow-up plan? And statistics say we've got to follow up with a lead eight times. Unless it's a referral, that, that substantially decreases. But it, really think through that. So understanding your target market, um, what is your follow-up plan for the lead you do have? And then this is super basic. And then these are just three of the steps. But what is your prospecting plan? Um, I, I meet with people every day, all week long. And one of my first questions, you know, I say, what is your prospecting plan? And they don't know. CEOs don't know. Mm -hmm. Or I do this exercise and I'm, so if you're listening, this is a great exercise, super simple. Take a piece of paper and put it into the three parts. One part, it says marketing. One part says prospecting. And one part says advertising. And then fill in the behaviors that you and your company are doing. But remember, and this is just my definition, you can utilize your own definition, but I quote prospecting as the behavior you do to engage and have a conversation. Marketing is an effort to create the conversation. So oftentimes I see companies when I list out their prospecting, they have a bunch of marketing activities and not mm -hmm. prospecting. So just basic, if you're sitting out there right now and you're like, where do I go? I want to ask you, who is your target market? And what is your follow-up plan? And third, what is your true prospecting behaviors currently? Mm -hmm. The thing that's going on for me, this is a little off script, but help me understand how you under, you get to know, really, really get to know your customers and their fears and needs. And mm -hmm. how do you so, do that effectively? Um, this is how I've done it. And this is what I teach. I say, go get your dream 50. Now, if you're a new entrepreneurial person or a small business owner, you're like, I don't have 50 people. Get what you got, right? When I first started at the home building company, I had four people and, um, and three referral partners and four past clients, huh! but it worked. Okay. So the numbers aren't the, the key, but for those of us who have larger businesses, look at your dream 50. And then this is what I say. I say, sit down like you and I are doing right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have a Zoom call, have a conversation and start asking them the questions. And I call this your demographics, right? Find out the demographics. Mm -hmm. But also let's go into the what I call the social graphics and the um, psychographics. Mm -hmm. So if you and I were having a conversation, Donna, I would be asking you a lot of what you're asking me. What are your fears right now? What's stopping you from living the dreams that you want? Mm -hmm. What do you hate about my industry? <laughs> what do you like about my industry? What would working with me have to look like? And really get to understand them. Mm -hmm. um, and unperceived. If I could say anything to the ladies listening, sometimes we get in a bubble and we think in that bubble, we understand our people. And so we're like, oh, I know what they want. That is a slippery, scary, scary, scary road. And I learned this best. I'm, I'm going to do a, a little tangent because it proves a point. Yeah. Um, in the home building business, when we, we've we built it, and, and thankfully, we are one of the most, um, in the top five most Googled websites in the world on how to build on land. Okay. So we, wow. we accomplished a little tiny niche, nothing little company in Oklahoma did something fabulous because we read a book and the book is they ask you answer. And it is simply the, the cliff notes is ask your people their 100 most asked questions and then answer the questions in a non sales manner. Don't try to sell them on you. Just answer the questions. And so we did that. And uh, I'm not saying when we did it even well at the beginning, but we did that. And interesting enough, all these years later, then now a decade later, I um, had the privilege of speaking to a large group of people in, in New Orleans that were in um, engineering, architecture, and large construction. And it was all of their marketing and business development. And I had done a survey prior to and asked them, what do you guys think everyone in the home building market wants to see on my website? And you can imagine, right? The answers, bedroom, I mean, kitchens, bathrooms, floor plans. But 
five years in a row on our extremely trafficked website, if I say that right, mm -hmm. that's not it. Those things they suggested weren't even on the front page of Google for in our internal Google search. The number one blog on our website, five years running, how does a septic system work? Ah. <laughs> okay, because if you build custom houses on land, you got to know how to go to the bathroom, <laughs> right? Before you care about how pretty the kitchen is. But this is a prime example of when we are serving other people, let's get out of our bubble because you don't know what they're really interested in if you don't ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a prime example. So let's get out and let's ask these people and, and not be... Um, Let's not be defined what by other people tell us. Let's go ask the people we serve. Very nice. Great answer. That's a great answer. All right. Uh, let's see here. Do you think, I, I hear what you're saying about the mindset and not focusing on the worries, but um, do you think that small business owners and sales leaders have to change their approach in this environment right now? So this, this is going to be controversial, but I'm just going to speak from my heart. Yeah. Right now is not the time. I see a number of businesses laying off their sales and marketing teams. I know. That's um, I would tell you this is not that time. Mm -hmm. This is not the time. Matter of fact, I would be bold and tell you this is the time to invest in your company. Mm -hmm. um, this is the time to put money back into your company. I live by the adage when the getting's good, have reserves because when the getting is bad, that's when I expand. Gotcha. Okay, because I believe other people will retract. And so then I'll push in and I'll grab market share. And I um, will have the opportunity. Lots, I just think you'll have more opportunities. So what if I would say anything right now is have faith mm -hmm. and, and take the risk mm -hmm. and look at, go back to the fundamentals, spend time with your, if 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 you have a large team, and you're a CEO that hasn't been in the trenches with your salespeople for a minute, get in there. Listen to the conversations, understand their selling system. Are they doing the fundamentals? Engage in the sales and marketing right now and expand those areas. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Now, what the thought that crossed my mind is in downtimes, I know people are worried, right? They're worried about their companies, they're worried about their jobs. You need them motivated and selling. Um, any thoughts on that? about how you do that, keep people engaged and not working. Well, one of the things is as the leader, right, we set the tone. Yeah. Um, and so if we're worried, everyone's worried. Mm -hmm. But if we're not, if we're going out and we're doing the behaviors, and frankly, I think this is, comes back to, I know for my business partner and I, we have actually re-engaged and we're sitting, imagine if we're at war, just right? So as the generals, we're not back at the home base right now. Mm -hmm. We're on the front lines with our team, experiencing it with them, double checking their processes, all doing, getting in the trenches with them, showing them, hey, we believe we're going forward. And crazy enough, we just, in both of my businesses, we just hired more people and people are like, what are you doing right now? And our team is like, well, if they're hiring more people, we must be okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, anyway, that's, that, that is something to think about. I know, I know Nan's making a come here. If companies are laying off their sales and marketing team, is this a good time to present marketing opportunities that they can get on a contract or project basis with a small company? I, yes, I mm -hmm. absolutely think so. So right now, interesting, in the last couple of um, months, I've had a number of people Donna, that's what, why I asked you one of the questions. High valued people that are like, hey, Athena, I'm losing my job. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for those of you who are out there that are CEOs and maybe you can't afford somebody full time, there is, there are people in the market looking for work right now that would be willing to do 1099 or as needed work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Very good point. I, I, and I was wondering with people not going back into the job market, if you've got more people doing actually that, a lot of people doing 1099 stuff on their own. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, um, uh, somebody asked, is this also a good time to promote starting a business? I think it depends right on the business. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I always 
this is my adage, do your homework um, and have a, this is just me, have a good prospecting plan. I care more about the prospecting plan than the business plan. <laughs> so I think if you have a good prospecting plan, you can make a business work. Oh God, yes. I, I, and I know as a young person, I didn't recognize how important sales was. Now I think they're at the top of the pyramid. If you don't have good salespeople, you don't have a business. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So you're an expert on gaining sales through referrals. What is a referral network? How do we build one? What do we use it for? <laughs> right. So a referral, this, this is, I like to keep things really simple, right? Given my history, I'm like, can we, I'm not, I didn't go to Harvard. I'm going to keep this very simple. A referral partner is just simply somebody who has trusted you with a referral. I don't even count a referral partner as somebody who I've closed business with. I'm just talking about somebody who has trusted me enough. Um, and I love those because sometimes I have referral partners who've referred me a number of people and it doesn't close, which just shows me an opportunity, right, to better educate them. I've screwed up somewhere um, explaining who I serve. So I, that's why I really do that. But so a referral partner is just somebody who's trusted you enough to connect you with somebody. Now, how do you build that network? Um, there's a lot to that. So how do I make this answer this really shortly? One, you have to become the person who attracts people. So you have to be a person of character. Mm -hmm. So you need to be developing you and who you are so that people trust you. Two, you have to be a person of service. You have to give to get. And I get pushed back on this a lot. People are like, well, then you're just giving, 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 and you're not making money. I don't, I absolutely disagree with that. Um, I think you have to have boundaries. I think there's always good boundaries. However, I think you give to get. Um, and so in every conversation that you have, what you're looking at is how can you serve other people? You can, the macro, those are macro. The micro here is who do you need to be talking to? And I call this your wheel of fortune. Once you identify your target market, then you find out who are the people who touch my target market. And I go build relationships with them. And as I build relationship with them, they become my workforce and we work together. So Donna, how that would work is if you and I serve the same people, then mm -hmm. we talk, I know your business, you know, my business, and we know who we're serving. So as we come in contact with those people, we're feeding those people to each other. Mm -hmm. And I love this because then it expands your referral network but it also, and I know this is your heart, the client wins because they get served by you with the right heart. They get served by me with the right heart. It's a win, win, win. And yeah. that expands. And I, I like to say it's molecule. So imagine you have a big circle, right? Your wheel of fortune, mm -hmm. and then you have your spokes. And then what happens is that goes, then that spoke creates a new spoke. And then all of a sudden, you have a molecule that becomes an organism that doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. find additional new target markets, new referral partners. And so all of that combination comes into your referrals. And we did that. Um, I wish the people in here could understand the home building business that I have in is a super niche and it only is in a really small area. So we only build within a 90 mile radius of Oklahoma City. Mm. We only build custom on land, uber, uber niche. Um, in 2016, we had three referral partners. Um, I had my assistant look it up before this call. As of today, we have over 1,200 referral partners. Nice. Right? Nice. Yeah. So I always laugh with people. A referral network allows you to sit on the beach, having a Mai Tai or reading a book, whatever is your thing. And the, and the referrals are flooding in. That's beautiful, right? Yes, so yes, yes. That's yes. what it is. Well, and, and it's interesting. So I, I, people ask me all the time how I've built the network I have. And, and that piece about give to get is it. I mean, you know, I'm constantly looking yeah. for ways to put two people in touch with each other that can be helpful to each other. Yep. And it works. It yeah, works. You're Thank excellent you. at that. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right, let's see here. Um, 
So you uh, carry an awful lot. <laughs> I, I really admire you and all you do. And again, I watch your Facebook page. Um, so I know women have a lot of time management challenges. Um, you've got your consulting practice. You're trying to grow a business. You're on a board. You also have a child with a disability. I'm interested in your insights on that. Somehow you managed to do all of that. How do you do it? Um, the power of saying no. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the number one thing that I would say to ladies is we need to get our priorities in line. I don't think we often sit down and really figure out what are my priorities. And when I say that, um, interesting enough, I used to be a workaholic and I achieved a thousand percent less than I do now as not a workaholic, which is really funny. So mm -hmm. um, what I do and I take my clients through is I and I didn't create this. It's the balance will of life where we look at all the different aspects because I don't believe in balance. I don't believe in work-life balance. <laughs> I, I think every day is a little bit different. So what, what I say is look at every area of your life and from those create the true priorities and mm -hmm. from your priorities create what I call your vital functions. Okay, narrow it down. What are the functions that if you do not do them, your life and your business fail? Yeah. We allow too many things become necessary or important or critical that just aren't. And some of that is, you know, and I, I this is, you know, me talking to myself, some of that is because we have a need to feel something. There's an emotional need being met there. But if we understand our priorities and our vital functions, then those are the things we say yes to. And then we allow ourselves to say no to the other things without shame or guilt. And um, that's what I do. And then I take from that, I time block them. Mm -hmm. And I have very good boundaries. So I'm, I have, and I didn't, this did not come overnight, but I, I tell people, you know, if you called me and said, I said, I would say something like this. That sounds like a wonderful opportunity. I love this. I love what you're doing, but it doesn't meet under my vital priorities right now. Do you mind if I shelf it until I get these things accomplished? And can I revisit it later? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's saying no so that I say yes to the right things. Yeah. No, that's super important. That's super important. I've heard Warren Buffett has that kind of rule too, in terms of he thinks that that's why people fail is that they don't say no enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he, of course, he's not alone, right? I mean, I we can go through a lot of people far more successful than me that utilize that strategy. Well, that's really good. That's really good. Okay. So um, how do you keep yourself focused and motivated? So you time block, you talked about that. Tell me what that is and how do you stay on track? Okay. Um, one is I have listed my priorities and my whys by those priorities. Yeah. Okay. So I have my, I have my priorities listed and my whys listed. Mm -hmm. Then I know my vital functions and every week I track that I accomplish my vital functions. So it's not, um, Athena is not more disciplined. I don't have anything. I have accountability. I have systems and I have to remember my why. Now, I will also say this. Sometimes I just throw it out the window and need a good cry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, sometimes my daughter, um, you know, it, she has a lot of medical issues and, and, and being very transparent. Just two weeks ago on a Sunday night, uh, my daughter has seizure disorder and um, it has to be severe for me to call 911 because we know what to do at home. Two weeks ago, it was severe and I'm literally on the phone counting her breaths while I'm waiting for the ambulance to arrive. That is mm -hmm. part of my reality. Then the next day, I canceled all of my appointments because I didn't get home from the hospital till five. I did only my must do vital functions and I allowed myself a good little cry. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I allowed myself to take time and I know what needs to do to fill myself up. So I'm not a robot. I live. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's critical. And I, where I used to in the past shame myself for that, 
Now I don't because I tell myself, okay, that's okay. You know what you've got to do. You can do it on a different day. Today, mama, you need to take a breath because your cup just got sucked out last night. Yeah. Wow. 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 You're, you're so right. You're so right. It's, it's kind of a pressure valve, right? To, yep. to be able to do that. Oh man. Bless your heart. Um, okay. I, Nan was asking, uh, could you give us some more information on what goes into a prospecting plan? Yes. Yes, Nan, I sure will. Because that's my little jam. I get all excited about <laughs> People are like, you're such a nerd. I know. Um, so a prospecting plan is literally listing out the activities and behaviors that you must do to get leads and nurture your referral partners. So for example, one thing I tell people, everyone, the number one thing on your prospecting plan must be nurturing your past clients and or clients. So nurturing your past clients and or clients. So that needs to be on your prospecting plan. The other nurturing your referral partners. Mm -hmm. And when I say nurturing, I'm talking about building relationships, having relationships. Mm -hmm. And you can do that a number of ways. <clears throat> then the other prospecting behavior needs to be, what are you doing to um, cultivate new relationships that become your referral partners, your clients? So what activities are you doing to create those? Another one that I just cringe when I don't see this one, but um, on your prospecting list needs to be nurturing your sales pipeline. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Donna, I, I sit with companies that are struggling with sales and I'm like, show me your sales pipeline. And they don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, mm -hmm. let's start there. Let's what what is that? And let's define it. And then let's create in your prospecting plan, nurturing that to move those clients through. And then I also say, so social media, uh, it's fine. I have a friend that's a national um, social media coach. And he says, I have the worst social media I've ever met with somebody who produces the most results from it. And I just chuckle with them. I'm like, well, I have teams of people fixing that. But it's because I use social media as a prospecting tool. And what I mean by that is getting into social media and using that to, for connections. So I use Facebook lists and I have a list of all my referral partners and my clients. And I'm able in my prospecting plan to tell myself I'm going to sit down for the next hour and go in there and build relationships, comment, like, pick up the phone, talk to them. And that's just one additional way to stay connected. So those are some basics, but it's listing out the behaviors that you need to do in order to create revenue and leads. Mm -hmm. um, um, somebody's asking right now, uh, define a sales pipeline. Is it uh, people who've brought one thing for, um, is it people who bought one thing from you. No. So a sales pipeline, let me, and this is just my interpretation of a sales pipeline as I've helped people. A sales pipeline has three components and I'm going to keep it very high level. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for my coaching and my businesses, I have this really dialed into like super detailed, but I, for this call, I'm going to keep it high, high, high level. A sales pipeline should be three components. One, all the new leads coming in. Where are they coming from? What are you doing to nurture them? Understanding you need to touch those eight times. What does that look like? Then in the middle, your middle pipeline, which I call your, your sales pipeline in the middle is your, and this is very elementary, but your 30, 60, 90 days. Who are you closing in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Who are those people, right? And then anything outside of 90 days, I call it your gold mine. So who are the people in your gold mine that you're nurturing, but they're not urgent? Okay, so that is a very basic, um, and I, I could go, I could spend two hours just on that, but that's very basic oh. and allows you to see it because at any given time as a CEO, right now in both of my businesses, I have a dashboard where I can push a button and it pull up and I can see our pipeline in any, now mine is all done by statistics, proven ratios. I can tell you what my cash flow is going to look like. I can tell you where the leaks are in my sales process. I can tell you what my sales team needs to adapt and adjust. 
literally within like all I need is three weeks. In three weeks, I see patterns and I can adjust them. Mm. And so having a sales pipeline, you can't lie to yourself, right? You got to be like, oh, no leads are coming or the people in the middle aren't moving. And there's there's other pieces to that, right? You, you've got to qualify. You've got to understand buying and sell cycles. So I can go deeper there, but just basic. That's the basic. Do you use specific tools? Uh, what yes. tools do you use to track all that? So I use HubSpot, um, okay. which is a CRM. Um, it's the, for me and my businesses, we have found it to be absolutely the most essential tool. Now, people ask me all the time, what's the best CRM? The one you'll use. Right. Yeah, but fair enough. Hub, HubSpot, I like HubSpot because HubSpot is relationship based and inbound based, not outbound based. Mm -hmm. And even though I like prospecting, my prospecting behaviors are based on building relationships, not mass marketing. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I, yeah. If people are starting a business or getting one up and running, um, they have some, if you are working through a launch pad or an accelerator or something, they've got a relationship with HubSpot and sometimes you can get at it at a reasonable cost. I know it's not cheap once you it grow. Is not. I, I will say um, for my coaching business, I have the highest package that you can get with HubSpot and it is the number, it's, it's more expensive than my payroll. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> it, it works. We're going to be using it. Yeah. But it, it will, it'll automate and do all kinds of things. So. Okay, but they good. do have beginner packages. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I, I'm interested in whether or not you see women as having any specific advantages when it comes to business development and how we could capitalize on those. Yes, we do. Isn't that good news, ladies? <laughs> um, I love this because what is happening in the marketplace. I think we've gone through, um, I'm going to date myself, but you know, you see what happened in the 80s, you see what happened in the 90s, in the 2000s. What I'm seeing now is um, people want more authenticity. They're starting to see like what worked even five years ago where I could take a picture of myself in front of a plane that I rented for a day to look and act wealthy. People are starting to see behind, uh, the I call it the Oz effect. We're seeing behind the curtain and we're no longer impressed, right? And mm -hmm. so the beauty is, as ladies, we can step back and say, we can be authentically ourselves and mm -hmm. be proud of that because we have the basic innate skills that is necessary in this new market, which are nurturing. Okay. Even if I'm not a high nurturer, but I'm better than most guys, no offense, gentlemen. And so nurturing, we, we listen better. So we have better listening skills typically by nature and we build relationships, emotional connection better. And mm -hmm. I think it's really critical that we tap into those things in order to propel us. Plus, if we look at statistics, it's women who are advancing as the purchasers. There are women who are advancing as the CEOs. And so it's, there are more of us out there um, to connect with and understand each other. So I think it's finally our time. I, I, I know that's silly, but I'm like, okay, it's our time. Like this is the time. And if I can say on a tangent, it is also our time. And I know you do such a great job of this. And it's why I've continued to follow you because of your heart is it's time where we pick up the banner of mentoring those coming before us, um, mm -hmm. especially given my history. I understand the Me Too movement, but one of the vacuums the Me Too movement created is mentorship for women. Uh -huh. A lot of men who were mentoring women have stopped and they're like, I don't want to be alone with you. I don't want to do that with you. I don't trust you. And so as ladies, really, it's time for us to step up and what are we doing to service the other ladies coming underneath us? God, I so agree with you. And it's it's interesting because I, I feel like more and more women are getting on that bandwagon. I think that the women of old that would slam the door behind them when they got to the top, I think are, I hope that day is over. It feels like it is like women are helping each other up more than they ever yes. have before. I, I hope so. Not enough. Yeah. I think we're doing it, Donna, at a level we never have. Mm -hmm. And because of that vacuum, mm -hmm. 
Uh-huh. We were already behind. Yeah. And now because of that vacuum, it's even worse. And that's um, after I launched and do a couple of other things, that's a conversation. I would love you and I to talk through that. You're one of the people that um, it's always been on my radar um, here locally, especially because of your heart for that. I mean, that is your heart and you do it on a national scale. So I'd love to talk more in detail about that. So well, we great. have a question over here. Okay, let's see here. So uh, give me an example of when you would do this. Let's see here. When, what you would do for this. The person took the quiz, then attended the webinar, then bought a $97 workshop. I see we'd call this client a client. What would be the next step? Offer them another workshop, go back to the free webinar approach. What do you think? So um, two things. One, if they've loved the webinar and they've already, then I would, I would definitely call them if they've purchased from you a client then I would absolutely offer them additional products that you offer that would solidify the, the knowledge and take them deeper into the journey. Um, and three, I would continue to offer them what I call service or free nuggets. So free nuggets of information that will be helpful. So going back to those 100 questions. So if a client comes to you and purchases a product, they still apply as your client to those hundred questions. So send them email drips that answer those hundred questions for free at high level that then invite them to go back to your product or services where you go deeper. And so that keeps the conversation going. Okay. And depending the question over here, would you call them all depends on the scalability of your business. So in the beginning of my business, yes. As we got in the home building business, especially as our referral partnerships got in the 500 plus, there was no calling all of them. So we automated our um, approach to them. So we stayed connected them on social media and we automated drip campaigns. And then we focused going back to our dream 50. So we went back to the 50 people giving us the most leads and those people had the actual human touch still. Very good. Back to the 80, 20 rule. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, where do you think we're going in the next year? Um, if you had a crystal ball, what do you think is coming? Uh, what's on your radar and what are the ramifications? So I'll tell you the one thing, and I'm telling this to all of my clients, especially I have a number of um, I know, in uh, multi-level marketing companies that I coach, mm -hmm. which is an, an interesting field right now. One of the biggest things I'm going to say, we've got to get our database and we have to own it. We've got to get off social media as the only platform for our businesses. We do not know the future of social media. We do mm -hmm. not know the limitations that they'll put on. We do not know the cost of what it will cost. We do, I know there's new development of the World Wide Web even going through a huge transformational change. Mm -hmm. So as all of this is happening in the tech world, the days where I have all of my prospecting, all of my marketing on social media and don't own my own email list is gone or is going away. Huh. And so utilize social media as a tool. Please mm -hmm. do not make it your foundation. Yeah. Don't really make it your point. foundation. Use it as a tool. You know, it's interesting. I'm going to do a thing on uh, chat GPT, uh, I think, uh, next week. I, I really feel everybody needs to be aware of that because that is going to change the world. It's amazing. I, what What do you think about that and the implications it's going to have? Um, I, I So what limits in knowledge, so I'm not a tech expert, so I'm only going off of what my mentors are telling me. And so my very limited knowledge, I think we better embrace it. I think, I think we need to sit back in... The limited knowledge I know, I think it actually is going to be good. I think it's going to give us some power back mm -hmm. if we mm -hmm. own our own databases. I think if we own our own databases and we're not reliant 100% on social media, we're going to weather this well. Yeah. If we do not start adapting change now and the change happens, it could be catastrophic for your business. Mm -hmm. My mentor has been saying for six years, 
to get the data back on your own websites. You know, I just was teasing you about the cost of my HubSpot. Part of that is because I've created an MLS, which is a multi-learning system. <laughs> and we're putting it on my own website. So I'm not using an external like teachable. I'm not using somebody else's platform in order to teach my classes. I will own it. Um, so this, I'm more of owning your technology. If we do based on what my mentors, my mentors have been telling me. So we mm -hmm. really have to, as CEOs and business owners, start looking at our dependency on exterior technology. That is a really good point. That's a really good point. So, um, so Nana's asking, is this a platform that you integrate into your website? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So th through a high level, um, HubSpot has this cap cap capability. It's very expensive, but it is through HubSpot and it all inter intertwines together. And I have a company that um, is obviously working with me to do all of that. But even if you can't afford that, if you're not there yet, don't be discouraged. There are, utilize those other platforms, but just own, make sure you have your emails. That is a really, really, really good point. That's a really good point. Okay, any other questions, guys, before we close up the session here? If they, well, while they think, why don't you tell me, what are the top three things you want us to have learned from you today? Number one is mindset. I want to go back where I started. There's a recession going on. You're not participating. We uh -huh. have to have a belief. We've got to be walking in faith in our abilities and what we're capable of doing. Two, go back to the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. back to your fundamentals. They're simple, but they're powerful. And third, own your database. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. It's really good advice. How about actions we should take coming out of here? Um, number one actions is don't get overwhelmed. Sit down and figure out your priorities and your vital functions. And mm -hmm. remember, your vital functions are honestly, they're not, please do not be ruled by your emotions of wanting this huge to-do list to feel powerful and important. Your vital functions are the functions that if you do not do them, your life as you want to live it will be gone. Mm. So vital functions have to have some true health, like ramifications to caring for self, relationships in your life, and the business functions that are truly vital. Mm. Mm. It's a really, really good reminder. Really good reminder. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose all the time and trying to figure out what the priorities actually are. That's a very helpful tool to do that. Okay, very good. Um, let's see here. If people have questions or they want to learn more or they'd love to get coaching from you, how do they pursue that? Simply just come to my website at athena.com, athenacaptain.com. So athenacaptain.com. And there are links in there to have a free consult with me, have a conversation um, in that, which is going to be fun. I can tell you um, we're launching five new products in the next 90 days. So if you we have that conversation, I can tell you about that. I also have a Facebook page called Athena's um, Prospecting Secrets. Get involved because that group of people will know of all the new upcoming things coming out. Okay, very, very good. All right. Anything else to add? No, just believe in yourself. We can do this. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. This has been so uplifting and really effective. Thank you so much. Uh, I learned a lot. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you for having me. Of course. Okay, so you guys, I am going to try to do something on chat GPT next, next Friday because we need it. We really do. A lot of stuff is happening. I think it's going to totally change our businesses in a lot of key ways, and it can expedite things for all of us small business owners it can really help us compete with the big guys in terms of the capability so we'll learn more about that next week um let's see here i sure appreciate you being here please um like and share our social media pages please go to pursepower.com um and the let's share the journey tab to find all of our 94 or so prior episodes um we post the speaker for every friday each monday and please register on our website um any final comments let's see here 
Any final comments? All right. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank and, you. And uh, please remember, everybody, purse power, we have it. Let's use it. Take care. Bye, guys.